Um, that, that comparison is made all the time, and it's a very uh, silly one, because uh, I am not William Faulkner, nor will I ever be. He's the great American writer of the 20th century, and uh, I, I revere him, and I grew up learning from him, and that was really what I wrote about uh, uh, when I, re I made a speech, and I, I wrote about um, writing his obituary and trying to convey what I felt about him especially what I felt about The Sound and the Fury, which I was so much involved in in that point when I was writing my first novel about the Phelan family, that little excerpt I wrote about Francis Phelan coming into the bar. That doesn't sound like Faulkner, but it's not. But it was, I was heavily in the Faulkner era, in, that, uh, in the Faulkner oeuvre in that era when I was writing that book. I read that book over and over again. I just, I, have, I revere him enormously and I wrote about it, and uh, Carlin Romano, who was a, a critic for the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, I read over in Bennington one night, and he, he introduced me, and he said that uh, people say that uh, I'm the, uh, the Faulkner of Albany, and now there, people are saying that uh, this young writer is the, the William Kennedy of New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I go along with it. I mean, <laughs> it's fun. It doesn't hurt. I, oh, I went to see his house, Rowan Oak. I had a wonderful tour. I saw his typewriter and, and his clothes. You couldn't believe the clothes he wore. How little they were, how little he was. And how tattered those clothes were. Unbelievable. In the last pictures of his life, you know, they, he's wearing this uh, elbow uh, uh, the jacket, a very, you know, it's got... Uh, lapels with velvet or something on them, and, and the sleeves are out, and the knees are out on his trousers, and uh, un unbelievably tattered. He didn't need to be that way, but it was a, obviously an affectation that he had to wear these clothes. He was in the closet with his <coughs> rifle. It's a wonderful visit for me.